How many fucking times do I have to say? You have the fucking script. I said, don't change a fucking word on the script. Not a comma. This is why you're fucking poor. This is why the cocksuckers watching this on YouTube are so fucking poor. The only one that gives a fuck what you, is you. And you. And you and the fucking morons on YouTube. Mr. Carnegie was a hard bastard. <laughs> Vanderbilt was a hard bastard. Henry Ford I was a hard bastard. Rockefeller was a hard bastard. Steve Jobs was a ruthless hard bastard. When Josh was, uh, um, he had a 60 hour a week job and he was doing QLA 70 hours a week. That doesn't give him much room for sleep, does it? But you'll say, well, fuck, he was 17, 18. You don't need to sleep when you're 17, 18. You, will already, you already got a reason why he, you can't work 130, 40 hours a week, that you need sleep. He cut back to three hours a night's sleep, the guy you just listened to, and then he couldn't take it. He only lasted a few weeks at three hours a night's sleep, and so he had to go back to four hours. When you know, it's like when you were in lust with that person, you know, you wanted to fuck all night, fuck in the toilet, in the car, in, in the closet. When you, when you figure out that every hour you sleep, you're not making money, you'll never sleep again. But does that look like your group? No, it doesn't look like your group. I mean, in no way, shape, manner, or form. You know, maybe if we had a bunch of bunny rabbits <laughs> running there, uh, or um, it's unbelievable, but again, you are who you hang around with, you know? And as Oprah Winfrey says, and which I, I talk about a lot, is that you want people with a like mind and it, that are better than you, smarter than you, more intelligent than you, to get on your bus. And don't be so con concerned about what you're going to do with those people, but you want to, you know, the joint brain is, you know, there's nothing the joint brain, collective brain, or brains, can't overcome. And I give the example of the uh, atomic bomb, the Manhattan Project, and they were put together, uh, and they were told, we need, uh, we need to develop a weapon of mass destruction, which they didn't call it that back in those days, uh, in the middle 40s, to end the war in the Pacific. Uh, and they did. They didn't know if it was implode or explode, but they did. But if, you're, if, if your team doesn't look like that, then you should, I won't say you should give serious thought, you should just fucking change. As soon as we got tougher, as soon as we got less PC, as soon as we got that we didn't care what they said or thought about us, we got more successful. And we started doing deals. We started doing deals. You cannot do, you know, tra a lot of transactions without hurting feelings. You know, the old saying about um, to make an omelet, you got to break eggs. You know, and everybody that's ever had an omelet, there's normally some kind of eggshell in it because they can't get all the eggshell out. Collateral damage. Fred Smith, the founder of um, um, Federal Express, said, uh, and he's similar background, similar age. He was a uh, young uh, Marine officer. I was a young Army officer. He said when he came back from Vietnam, as soon as he realized his mistakes, the collateral damage of his mistakes did not end up with body bags, meaning dead people, he says the rest was easy. So the worst I was ever going to do is hurt somebody's feelings, make them cry. And he built Federal Express, and, and he's one of the icons of business who's still running the business. This is what I'm training you to be like. The four horsemen of the motherfucking apocalypse. Fucking warriors, not whiners, not warriors. Do you think Donald Trump is a whiner? Do you think he worries and gives a fuck what you think of him? Do you think Elon Musk gives a fuck what you think of him? Do you think the late Steve Jobs gives it, gave a fuck what you thought of him? You think Bill Gates gives a fuck? And I can go on and on and on. The only one that gives a fuck what you, is you. And you. And you and the fucking morons on YouTube. Mr. Carnegie was a hard bastard. <laughs> Vanderbilt was a hard bastard. Henry Ford I was a hard bastard. Rockefeller was a hard bastard. Steve Jobs was a ruthless hard bastard. As Apple CEO Cook regularly begins sending emails at 4.30 in the morning on Sunday. He's a hard bastard. Why are all these guys that changed the world got one thing in common? They're fucking...
tough as nails, ruthless, take no prisoners. And then we got you, a stiff drink and a good fuck and kill most people in this room. I'm ashamed to say. In fact, forget the stiff drink, just a good fuck. My proceeds from PayPal acquisition were 80, 180 million, blah, 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 blah. Then I had to borrow money for rent. These guys, myself included, are all in. If they believe in what they're doing, they put all their money at risk, in which I have several times, not in recent years. Uh, SpaceX worker reveals a brutal company motto, uh, motto helped him survive all nighters working for Elon Musk. Notorious workaholic Elon Musk is so tied to his office that he's been known to sleep on the floor. I slept on the floor. Ford slept on the floor. Jobs slept on the floor. Gates slept on the floor. Success leaves clues, you fucking weenies. I still work 50, 60 hours a week, and I haven't had to work in 35 fucking years. Matthew and I were discussing some of the things um, about uh, why you've discounted um, on a subconscious level some of the things that have happened because absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. And he said something very profound for an Australian. This is heavy duty shit. But he said, I decided to do it even though it was stupid. I decided to do it. Stupid meaning the, follow the process to a, an intellectually bright guy who's an engineer. And see, you won't. You, you see, you'll figure out a better way. And he followed the stupid process that works and has been working for 45 years, 20 some years before when I was doing it, <clears throat> and 22 years since I've been coaching. And he called it. I, he wasn't trying to be insulting or anything. He says, I just decided to uh, follow it, you know. How did you say it? Instead of trying to be smart, I would just try to be stupid, shut that part off of my brain, and just do it. And what happened? He did it. And that's why it's hard for the YouTubers and all the other, because you, you, you can't dumb, you know, dumb down. You, you, won't, you will not believe that it's easy. You can't, you know, you won't. <clears throat> but he put it very succinctly. He sh you know, he just dumbed down and shut off that part of his brain and just followed the steps. You don't need fucking case studies. You have a, you have a fucking template. You have a motherfucking script that a fucking monkey can read. That Alex wants a fucking case study. Because he wants to know the shit behind it. Because he's stupid. And that's why he's fucking poor. You don't need any motherfucking case studies. How many fucking times do I have to say? You have the fucking script. I said don't change a fucking word on the script. Not a comma. If it's got misspelled fucking words, send it out misspelled. The last thing you fucking need is a fucking case study. This is why you're fucking poor. This is why the cocksuckers watching this on YouTube are so fucking poor. And the thing that always amuses me is that the uh, current day movies and stuff, they, uh, at the end of the movie normally the, the people reconcile. That's not my experience. The higher performer, the higher the performance person, the less probability that they're going to reconcile with anybody. Why? Because they don't need anybody. And almost all the big hitters I know, uh, and President Trump um, is a um, primary example of this, a preeminent example, saying sorry is a weakness. <clears throat> Apologizing is a weakness. Saying you were wrong was a weakness. What do I say? I may be wrong, but I'm never in motherfucking doubt. Every cocksucker I know. Which flies in the face of all the bullshit now. President Trump doubles down. Triples down.
I don't know if you can quadruple down, but, um, and that's my experience with those guys and the few really high-powered women that I've known. So again, it flies in the face of virtually everything you've been taught. The $50 billion man? That guy? Yes. yes. He doesn't give a shit, though. Yeah. That's what well, you're... He's almost dead. I don't think we could play his stuff without getting sued, Jamie. Hello, Joe. My name's Dan Pena. I'm still a formidable force at 6'1", 225. And if you think that I'm almost dead and I'm not going to be alive anymore, ask this bear that I killed with a fucking knife not too long ago. I'm still a very tough fucking guy. At 71, I take no bullshit in person or on the fucking YouTube. I'm not dead and I'm plenty alive and I don't give a fuck what anybody says about me. I rip people's head off and shit down their neck. And from one tough guy to another tough guy, don't be afraid, don't be scared to use my stuff on your podcast. It's all fucking free. You ask me, why do you give it away free, Dan? I give it away free to take the last fucking excuse away from the sorry cunts why they can't fulfill their dreams. I'm calling you out, Joe. You think you're a tough guy. You haven't met me. I'm the $50 billion man, and this is my lair. This young kid that came to me a year and a half ago, his goal, his dream in his life was to finish number one university champion archer in Britain. What's the best you've ever done? 20th in a regional meet, he says to me. So we set up a program, and I beat him like a fucking rented mule. That's him receiving the first place a couple months ago in Britain. The little skinny shit. He looks like a, a little Nimrod uh, snowflake, because he is. But he was firing six, seven hundred arrows a day. Most of you couldn't fire 50. So it's not just that. They, the girls tell me I'm better at knocking off weight off your big fat asses than I'm making money. I take like a chainsaw and I, you know, when a woman is walking away from you and it looks like two, uh, pigs in a gunny sack, you know what I'm talking about? I just take a fucking chainsaw and chop their cheeks off. This is one of my examples. Just one. They lose 100 pounds, 150 pounds, 75 kilos. Because I don't, live them, I don't allow them to not be accountable. When I say you're going to weigh yourself fucking four times a day, sweetheart, that's what the fuck I mean. Most of you in this room have never been held accountable for anything in your life. And look at the result. What are you going to tell your children? What are you going to tell your grandchildren? 20 years from now, daddy, grandpa, what were you doing during the greatest transformation of wealth in the history of the fucking planet? Other than having your thumb up your fucking ass. What are you going to tell them? Oh, I was thinking about it. I was spreadsheeting it. I'm proud to say I haven't done a spreadsheet in 10, 15 years. Go read another book. Go listen to another, uh, read a blog, listen to a podcast.